like there are websites out there that are dedicated to hurting white women who date black men because people are that full of hatred. Like they will dox you and they will try to hurt you and so on, whether it's be like attacking your significant other or like getting you fired from your job or something like people are full of hate. And the fact that it's targeted toward two people like being in love and like living a life together is really saddening and scary. The National Rifle Association filed for bankruptcy. Remote learning is not an easy solution for everyone. GameStop stock has been on a wild ride. A QAnon follower feared that she and her daughter would have to go into hiding after President Biden took office. Me going on the NRA Facebook because I used to be a supporter of them and seeing the comments that people are making about, you know, we got to take down the left and things like that. It's just that much hatred and that much like idea that we need to raise up a militia to take out what they said was unequivocally the trash in our society, in our country. It made me feel very unsafe because, you know, sometimes the enemy within will look like a friend, or will look like someone so familiar that you don't even anticipate it. Because I know we talked about how I have had friends that surprised me with their opinions on things and just how much they hated minorities and hated Black people that I was like, how did I miss this before? Because it was years that I've been friends with these people and I completely was blindsided by the outward hatred of other people. Ooh, in five words, describe my mood this week. <laughs> I'm not gonna make a sentence, but I think you'll understand yeah. it. It's, I would say, anxious, distracted. Anxious. Uh, tenacious. One word is grumpy. You could use it. Loving, supportive, and you have been trying hard to learn. You are coachable. You're still there and present in the relationship. Uh, you, you you feel good about those? <laughs> I don't, but they're all true. So okay. feel good about okay. being truthful. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, great. Then I don't want to ask you the question. <laughs> Recently, when have you been the most worried for our community and how does it still affect us? I am freaking petrified. I don't know what you want to say. With COVID. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pissed too because I'm pregnant. And this is my first, this is our first child. Like our first child. I should be around family, friends. I should be able to like be around people that I love. Plus us, especially black people in a weird situation because we know we have such a history with big pharma and all these, you know, med like the medical industry kind of just using us as guinea pigs. So we have this distrust within the medical industry. So even if vaccines could save us, a lot of us are petrified to do that. So, but then a lot of people aren't staying to their one house. There's people, look at it, like Atlanta is wowing right now. <laughs> I'd say the thing that uh, it seems that scares you the most um, is, is your family getting sick. The fact that they're in a place where the majority of people don't seem to care and, and it's easily sort of followed as well, I think. Um, Fucking Florida. <laughs> Okay, uh, I wasn't going to say any of that, but... Um, well, I'm mad at him. I'm mad at the whole state. What do you think that happened in the news the past week surprised me the most and why? I get. I don't know if this is news related, but remember we were well. I was watching the Q and non. Um, yeah. Documentary that Vice dropped on YouTube, and even if we get to the root of it, regardless if we believe it or not, it just common sense would tell you there's no way a hundred percent of those things that they're saying is wrong. And even if one percent of those things are right, 
that's messed up. Yeah. I think it's that, but then I think also today, like with the stock market, how oh yeah, yeah, that blew my mind. Like the classism is so evident. There's no rules. Are there rules to like the stock market? Not, not really. It's just uh, it's just the people running like the Nasdaq and all that other stuff are just dictating stuff and like it's, how it's not really do- a rule. It's not like a. It's not. Let I me mean not. It's not a, a written rule, so to speak. It's like unwritten stuff. The the tough part about that is just like being millennials, the generation we came out in, we inherited a kind of a really terrible time to be getting into our work lives and our careers professionally. And then you add into that a year where the market completely bottoms out because everyone's in lockdown. And, you know, sometimes it's like, where do you know where you can get that second income? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's very hard for me to deal with the fact that, you know, I'm having to rely on like unemployment since COVID nixed both of my jobs, but like, my parents were always like, debt is the worst thing that can happen to you. Or like asking someone for financial help is the worst thing that can happen to you. So like, it's, it's hard for me to accept that like, I need help because it's the worst thing that can happen to you. The question is, uh, what are you hesitant to speak to me about this, this week or recently? I think the thing I feel hesitant about is asking for space because I already kind of cave in my temple room Um, and specifically space alone with you that can be uninterrupted kids. I feel like I always feel hesitant to ask about that because it makes me feel, it's gonna make me cry. It makes me feel like you're gonna think I don't wanna be around the kids. Even though sometimes I need my, I don't want to be, and I want to just be with you and, you know, pretend we're on the beach somewhere, even though we can't go anywhere and it's snowing outside. (laughs) So those asking for space or asking for alone time makes me hesitant. I think uh, when you actually ask for what you want, it helps me. Sure. I think it helps Um, me too. (laughs) I mean, I mean, to me, there's a there's a difference between you asking for alone time, and uh, us having our own time, and then and then the boys coming in and out of the room, and it's basically their time, right? I feel like we have kind of three time zones in this house. <laughs> I'm happy that you're an amazing partner and that you really care and like love me because I can't imagine having to go through this without a partner like you. Um, Honestly, I can't imagine doing this with anybody but you because it's real.